So this is video lecture three. Uh, we are in week one, going over review of good programming principles. <clears throat> the three items that we will be focusing on in this uh, video is what are your ex what are the expectations with regard to documentation, with regard to robustness and modularity. So what do we mean by each of these uh, features? So documentation is having a header at the top of the main program and also preferably on every file or every helper file that you create. Um, this would consist of a star banner with all of this uh, name, date, and program description on it. Secondly, single line comments before each method definition that explains what are the parameters going to be used for, what is going to be the result of this method, and how briefly what uh, what is the logic of the method. Then single line comments wherever needed to explain a major decision taken uh, or uh, why that function call was being done or method call was being done at that point. And, uh, and then before any declaration, uh, just for us to know what is this variable going to be used for. Now, uh, Java docs is professional Java documentation and that is going to be taken up when we do a little more work on classes and objects because you will need to create a Java doc for each file. But for now, we're just going to stay with one through four. We're also going to focus on writing a Java programs with good programming style, uh, for example, with uh, regard to indentation, with regard to variable names and method names. So that is about documentation. Robust robustness is a slightly deeper issue in that uh, we need to take care that our program not just works as expected, but it does not break unexpectedly. For example, if uh, you know the user enters uh, input that is not expected, then how does the program actually recover from that? How does the program respond to changing uh, uh, needs for uh, uh, storage? Uh, for example, if you had a database and the user unexpectedly entered more data, how are we going to handle that situation? And also, how are we going to write correct programs which uh, do not lead to runtime errors so we don't have exception situations? So this is about robustness. And last but not the least is modularity, that uh, going back to our 15, we started off with using top-down design and uh, procedural decomposition. So our code has to be written in an optimal way without any code redundancy. Uh, of course, uh, if you remember, we always had two files. One was the helper file that stored the static methods, and the other was the main driver, which had, um, which had uh, uh, just perhaps maybe just one single call or a few limited number of method calls two methods that were defined inside the helper file. So that is an overview. And I'd like to go over an example. Um, but so here is a simple program. I'm trying to see what this program does, but because there's no documentation, I have no idea who wrote it or what the logic should be. I'm just guessing that there is an array declaration. The array is called L. Some input is being read. And while the user has input, uh, the line is going to be stored inside the array, the index is going to be incremented, the array is going to sort, get sorted, and then it's going to get displayed. But this is just guesswork. So here we can say that this program has no documentation, it's got poor programming style, no methods, so no modularity, and it's not robust because if I run this program, then honestly the user doesn't know what to do, but I'm just going to give some information so that's four, five, six, seven, eight. And here at the last, this is breaking my program, which means because the array size is eight, then the user has no way of knowing that there's a limit on the input. And also the program has no way of taking care of this exception situation. So I'm going to see if I can write a slightly better program and move to uh, my version two. And here you can see I'm trying to get better with documentation. I've got the header, and I also have some inline single comment documentation, which, um, which has got 
Here I know that I'm creating an array of size 8. Here are all the details of what exactly I'm doing. So this program is better. The documentation is definitely improved, but, and also I have changed the variable names. I've got lines here and uh, I've got an index here. So this is more in line with the expected Java style. So instead of using names like L and X and Y, and in the end, we don't know what they stand for, there's some meaningful names. But there is no modularity. The program is still not robust. And uh, so we need to go on with this incremented improvement. And now we are on version 3. Version 3 has the documentation. But as you can see, the driver program or the main program is much smaller. And we've got the documentation to say we've created the array. We are going to fill the database by calling a method here. And we are going to sort the database. So as you can see, I've got this robust modular version 3 helper dot indicating that I've got a helper file where the methods populate database and sort and display have been defined. And I'm guessing that populate database gets the information from the user and, uh, and, uh, and populates or saves the information from this database called lines. This is declared in the main program. It's passed to the method. The method fills it, returns it right here so that I can now pass it into another method, which is the sort and display. Remember that arrays are called, uh, arrays are passed using reference semantics. So I'm just fill the array base using reference semantics, which means I don't need to return the array. If I pass it as an input and make any changes in the method, then that's going to get reflected uh, in the main program. And now I can pass the uh, array into another method. So let's go and take a look at um, this helper file. Now, this helper file from your CAC 15 contains all the method definitions. If you remember the populate database, which was taking in uh, the array called lines, well, here it is. Uh, I've got information at the top of the method, so documentation saying what this method is doing, what are the parameters about. Inputs the database, fills it by querying it from the user. So how does it query? I create a scanner, and then while the user is going to give input, while s dot has next line, I'm just going to save that line that I've got from my console into the array and increment the index right here. So it should just fill up the array. And then what I would do is pass this fill database into a sort and display method, which sorts and prints out each line of the array. For this, I call arrays.sort, pass the information here. Arrays.sort is a utility that's given to us by Java. And then I just traverse through the array, starting with zero, making sure to stop at lines.length, because lines.length is now because we've declared it to be an array of size 8, it's got a size 8, and therefore it will go all the way from 0 through 7, and then it's going to uh, print the contents. So this one, I'm just going to compile this. It compiles fine, and then let me uh, run this program here. And it's still waiting because uh, it's waiting for input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My question is, have I taken care of the modularity? And the answer is, everything seems to be pretty good except the modularity. So I have, uh, looks like we have done a good job on documentation, done a good job on modularity, but the robustness issue is still something that we need to work on. I'm going to save that and come back to this example when uh, we review arrays. Uh, and we, then we are going to see how can you take an existing array and expand the array when uh, the user needs to give more information or more storage space is needed? And uh, one of your labs is also based off of that. And that's not going to happen until next week or the following week. So you should be set uh, with, uh, with the video when we come to that next week.